Good evening, and welcome to the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage, brought to you by Target and the Marriott Foundation. Every day at 6, the Millennium Stage brings you the best in music, dance, theater, and more. Each night's performance is broadcast live and available on demand on our website. As a courtesy to this evening's performers and audience members, please turn off your mobile devices and note the nearest exit. Flash photography, video recording, and audio recording are strictly prohibited. We hope you enjoy tonight's performance. I'll try that again. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for coming out tonight uh, to participate. That's what we're calling this affair. You're not sitting here as an audience member, but as a participant in a piece called Born Woman that was created by the Duke Ellington School of the Arts faculty and students. We are happy to be here to celebrate Women's History Month with you. The students have pulled together a couple of pieces that will celebrate the African-American experience from the transatlantic slave trade through today. Now, we can't do all of that in an hour, but we certainly would like to bring to you those special moments that we thought indeed deserved a moment in your light and in your minds. So I hope you will help me to welcome to the stage our wonderful and talented students from the Duke Ellington School of the Arts, representing the dance department, the theater department, and the vocal music department, Mellotones. Here is Born Woman. species but I sing no victim song I am a woman I am an artist and I know where my voice belongs
said, Lord, A decade were snatched up from the earth, dragged across the mountainous, swampy coastlines where they were birthed. Once free to be and roam around freely, are now in bondage and chained. These, These footprints, footprints began to embark on a journey immersed in pain, in suffering, anguish, desolation, strife. Abandonment, devastation, discord, longevity, segregation, abuse, defeat, and isolation. These, These footprints, footprints carried burdens beyond their years, experienced an existence consumed of fear, wet tears that eventually reared up a wall of courage, nerve, and bravery. A wall to protect them during their upcoming life of slavery. A, a wall that, that gave them comfort when discomfort greeted them at every turn. A wall that taught them to forget the things they once yearned for, for life was no longer theirs to own. These, These footprints, footprints tentatively walked the floorboards of the ship, shackled around their ankles, linking upward towards their wrists, fighting to avoid the lingering path of death living in their midst, while often considering suicide, where alas, they and freedom could coexist. These, These footprints, footprints planted themselves onto the rich rice soil, belonging to the master, the owner, cultivating, weeding, hoeing, digging as time passed and they matured older, being called by a name not given at their birth, a common misnomer, while childhood memories faded as the end arrived closer. These, These footprints, footprints bore 20 footsteps, forming the footholds of the future and firmly fixing their footing into the firmament of a forewarned existence and lugged the legacy full of lacerations and agony, which made them listen. Listen, listen to the voice of the footsteps that matured into adulthood before adolescence took its course. Listen, listen to the voice of those footprints that mounted a new found resilience as death came in full force. Listen, Listen to the voice of those footprints that gave birth to their children, suffering, exhaustion, depression, and shame. Listen, Listen to the voice of those footprints that pursued brighter tomorrows than the todays that they endured in the past that they overcame. Listen, Listen to the voice of those footprints that fought to remember their past and survive their present so that life could resurrect itself for the forthcoming. Listen, Listen to the voice of those footprints that turned bruised and battered souls into irrepressible gods and goddesses, both amazing and stunning. Listen, Listen to the voice of those footprints that stomached the horrors of their time, bore the abuse, witnessed the exploitation, experienced the maltreatment, so, so a, a future. future may reproduce into something utterly sublime. Those, Those footprints, footprints are a constant reminder that we are never, never defeated, yeah. never meant to stay down long. Yeah. Regardless of how long we are mistreated, we are meant to fight, to make a path for our future, Help me to thrive. Who endure the hurts and the pain so that beauty is what we conceive and into their marrow we, we breathe. breathe. Success. Prosperity. Victory. Pleasure. Triumph. Independence. Endurance. Perseverance. Achievement. Determination. Dedication. Assurance. Patience. Solidarity. Harmony. Forbearance. And life. Listen. 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 Listen.
water. Ooh. Wait Ooh. in the water, children. Wait, Wait. in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait, wait in the water. Wait, 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 wait in the water, wait, children. I said, wait, wait in the water. Wait, God's gonna trouble the water. See that band all dressed in red. God's going to oh, Looks like the band that Moses led. God's going to trouble the water. Oh, I said, wait, wait in the water. Wait, wait in the water, children. I said, wait in the water. God's gonna, gonna trouble, trouble the water. See that man all dressed in white. God's gonna, gonna trouble the water. He looks like the leader of the Israelites. God's gonna trouble the water. trouble the water I said God's gonna trouble the water God's gonna trouble the water water much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think, twixt them Negroes of the South and them women in the North all talking about rights, these white men have themselves in a fix pretty soon. <laughs> but what's all this about anyways? That man over there, he says women need to be lifted into carriages and helped over ditches and uh, given the best place anywhere. 
Nobody ever helps me over carriages or over mud puddles or gives me the best place anywhere. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and pushed barrels through, through branches and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all of them sold off to slavery. And when I cried out my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard my cries. And ain't I a woman? They talk about this thing in their head. Intellect? What's that got to do with women's rights or Negro rights anyways? If I have a cup and it only holds but a pint, and, and you have a quart, would you not be mean to not give me my little half measure full? That man over there, he say, woman can't have rights because Christ was a man. <laughs> well, sir, where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Ain't no man have nothing to do with him. And then they go and, and, and they act like the first woman God ever created was a woman. If she was strong enough to turn the world upside down all by herself, these women ought to be able to turn it right side up again. And now they asking to do it, these men better let them. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up the freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking and keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody Turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Good evening, fellow citizens and friends. I stand before you under indictment for the alleged crime of having voted at the last presidential election without the lawful right to vote. It will be my work this evening to prove to you that in thus voting, I not only committed no crime, but instead only simply exercised my citizen's right granted to me and all American citizens by the national constitution beyond any state to deny. <sighs> you cannot find a word in any of the grand documents left to us by the fathers assumed for government the power to create or confer rights. The Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution both propose to protect the people and their God-given rights. Not one of them pretends to bestow rights. All men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these, governments are instituted among men and deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Here, 
is pronounced the right of all men and consequently by the Quaker preacher said, all women, the voice to a government. And here in this, this very first paragraph of the Declaration is the assertion of the natural right of all to the ballot. How can the consent of the governed be given if the, the, the right to vote be denied? It was we, the people, not, not we, the white male citizens, nor yet we, the male citizens, but we, the whole people who, who formed this union. And we formed it not, not to give the blessings or liberty, but to secure them, not to the half of ourselves or to the half of our posterity, but to the whole people, women as well as men. And it is downright mockery to talk to women of their enjoyment of these rights when, when they are denied the use, the only use of securing them. We ask the judges to render true and unprejudiced opinions of the law. Wherever there is room for doubt to plead on the side of liberty and the equal rights to women, remembering that the true rule of the government under our national constitution, especially since its amendment, is that anything for human rights is constitutional. Anything against human rights is unconstitutional. And it is on this line that we propose to fight our battles and for the ballot all peacefully, but nevertheless, the, the less persistently through to complete triumph, when all United States citizens will be recognized as equals before the law. black My arms are long My hair is woolly My back is strong Strong enough to take the pain Again and again What do they call me? My name is Aunt Sarah My name is Aunt Sarah Aunt Sarah My skin is yellow long between two worlds I do belong my father was rich and white he forced my mother late one night what do they call me Little girl am 
my Anyone who has money to buy What do they call me? been a girl, half notes scattered without rhythm. No, no tune. <laughs> Distraught laughter fallen from a black girl's shoulders. It's funny. It's, it's hysterical. hysterical. The melodylessness of her dance. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell a soul. She's dancing on beer cans and shingles. This must be the spook house. Another song with no singers, lyrics, no, no voice, and interrupted solos. Are we ghouls? Children of horror? The, the joke? joke? Don't tell nobody, don't tell a soul. Are we animals? Have we gone crazy? I can't hear anything but maddening screams and the strains of death. And you promised you me! You promised me somebody! Anybody! Sing a black girl song. Bring her out to know herself. To know you. But sing her rhythms. Karen. Struggle. Hard time. Sing her song of life. She's been dead so long. Closed in silence so long. She doesn't know the sound of her own voice. Her infinite beauty. She's half notes scattered without rhythm. No, no tune. tune. Sing her sigh. Sing the song of her possibilities. Sing a righteous gospel. Let her be born. Let her be born. Let her be born and handled warmly. warmly. Call me 
My name is on Sarah. Lord, 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 on Sarah. My skin is yellow. My hair is long. Between two worlds, I do belong. My father was rich and white. He forced my mother late one night. What do they call me? My name's Saffronia. My name is Saffronia. Hey. My skin is tan. My hair is fine. My hips invite you. If you got money to buy <laughs> What do they call me? My name is Sweet Thing My name is Sweet Thing Ooh. Listen to mine, y'all listen to mine my skin is brown, and my manner is tough. I'll kill the first mother I see. My life has been too rough. I'm awfully bitter these days. Cause both of my parents were slaves. What do they? My name is Peaches. Ooh, An icon of the black power movement, Angela Davis, has led a life of resistance to injustice. This interview took place over several months and has been condensed. You uh, often talk about the importance of movements versus the individuals. How can we do this in a society that uh, promotes individualism to such a sacred concept? Hmm. Even as Nelson Mandela always insisted his accomplishments were collective, also achieved by the men and women who were his comrades, the media attempted to sanctify him as a heroic individual. It is essential to resist the depiction of history as the work of heroic individuals in order for people to recognize their part in the ever-expanding community of struggle. And uh, what is the significance of the Black Power Movement to you? The Black Power Movement or the Black Liberation Movement to me is a particular moment in the quest for black freedom. In many ways it is in response to what were perceived as the limitations of the civil rights movement. We had to fight not only for legal rights, but for substantive rights also. Housing, education, health care, etc. And to challenge the very structure of society. 
although many black individuals have entered economic, political, and social hierarchies, the number of overwhelming black people subject to economic, educational, and carceral racism are greater to that to the extent during the pre-Civil War era. Wow. How would you define black feminism and its role today? Black feminism emerged as a practical and theoretical effort <laughs> demonstrating the ra that race, gender, and class were inseparable in the two social worlds we inhabit. At the time of its emergence, black women were often asked to choose if the black movement or the women's movement was more important. This was the wrong question. The more appropriate question would be, how to understand the interconnections and intersections between the two movements. But you see, we are still faced with the challenge of understanding the complex ways of how race, gender, class, sexuality, nation, and ability are intertwined. How would you respond if I said the struggle is endless? I would say that our struggles mature. They produce new, new ideas, new issues, new terrain on which we emerge on our walk to freedom. Like Nelson Mandela, we must be willing to embrace the long walk toward freedom.
South Side, right in the South Shore, and I am who I am today because of this community. I know the struggles many of you all face, how you walk the long way home to avoid the gangs, how you fight to concentrate on your homework when there's too much noise at home, how you keep it together when your families are having hard times making ends meet. But more importantly, I know the strengths of this community. I know the families of the South Side. And while they may all come in different shapes and sizes, most families here are tight, bound together by the kind of love that gets stronger when it's tested. Over the past six years as First Lady, I visited many communities across America just like this one, communities that face plenty of challenges and crises, but where folks have the same strong work, work ethic, this, those same good values and those same big dreams for their kids. But unfortunately, all those positive things hardly ever even make the evening news. Instead, the places where we've grown up only make the, the headlines when something tragic happens, when someone gets shot, or when the, the dropout rate climbs, when the new drug is out ruining people's lives. So, too often, we hear a skewed story about our communities. A narrative that says a stable, hardworking family in a neighborhood like Woodlawn or Chatham or Bronzeville is somehow remarkable. That a young person who graduates from high school and makes it off to college is a beat the odds kind of hero. Look, I can't tell you how many times people have met my mother and asked, well, how on earth did you ever raise kids like Michelle and Craig in a place like South Shore? And my mom looks at these folks like they're crazy. And she says, Michelle and Craig are nothing special. There are millions of Craigs and Michelles out there. And I did the same thing that all those other parents did, she says. I loved them. I believed in them. And I didn't take any nonsense from them. I'm here tonight because I want to share with you just two fundamental lessons that I've learned in my own life. Lessons grounded in courage love and faith that now define this community and that I continue to live by to this day. Now the first lesson I would like to share with you is don't ever be afraid to ask for help. And I cannot stress this enough. The second lesson is that this lesson gets you through struggles. And that is instead of helping hardships and failures discourage or exhaust you, let them inspire you. Let them make you even hungrier to succeed. 
Take the story of Lorraine Hansberry, for example, who grew up right here in Southside. Lorraine was determined to be a playwright, but she struggled. She struggled to raise enough money for her first play, but Lorraine stayed hungry. And eventually, that play, A Raisin in the Sun, became the first play to be on, by an African-American woman on Broadway. Or how about Richard Wright, who spent his young adult life years right here in the South Side. Richard's father was a sharecropper and abandoned his fam family at an early age. And while Richard loved to read, the local library wouldn't let him in because he was black. So Richard went ahead and wrote books of his own. Books like Native Son and Black Boy that made him one of the greatest writers in American history. Look, I know you can do this. See, because if Lorraine Hansberry or Richard Wright could do this and stay hungry through their hard strips and struggles and humiliations, if Dr. Martin Luther King, the namesake of your school, could sacrifice his life for our country, then I know you can show up for a tutoring lesson. I know you can go get some office hours. In the end, you all are the ones that are responsible for changing the narratives about our community. You are the ones who get to say what, what they say about our communities. You get to tell the stories of my family, your families, our heritage. That is the lesson Obama and I take on every day. Now, it's your choice to decide. Thank you. I love you all. Good night. God bless you. I lost my last paper. <laughs> we are our ancestors. They live through our being, though unseen. They are not dead, not histories forgotten, confined to the cobwebs of the dusty past. The prey to owl eyes, intellectual prowlers, seeking fame through our name. Our forefathers and foremothers live. They are not dead. Not skeletons on moldy shelves, encapsulated in books, seldom read only to be brought to life through irrelevant, irreverent, Eurocentric interpretations of our ancestral selves. Our abang still blows freedom's call, summoning our ancestors here, bringing light to our past, awakening the truth of our futures. Our drum echo ancestral heartbeats. Ritually speaking to us, through us, with us. Vibrating freedom sounds, sharing freedom's blood, arousing the ancestors. Our dreams conjure them nocturnally, gilding, confiding, whispering, sharing ancestral secrets. Revealing clues to us. About us. Clues about them. Invoking their blood legacy. We, we are, are our, our ancestors. ancestors.